Great. So, I propose to speak today about the way that writing systems and literacy spread. The approach is not so much related to the technical question of how, but rather the more interesting, I think, perspective of why. This conference offers a great opportunity to think less about writing itself and more about the social and cultural context, as they say, in which it exists. After all, writing systems are not gases, which inevitably spread from areas of higher concentration to lower. In some cases, to be sure, they are forcefully exported in the context of military conquest and subjugation, but otherwise the process is in fact from the outside, and neighboring people adopt and adapt strictly to their needs. This is neither an inevitable nor monolithic phenomenon. Responses to a new awareness of writing can vary along a continuum from apparent apathy to straightforward adoption, more creative adaptation, or, in the most drastic cases, the invention of an entirely new writing system. But whatever the response, each region or culture which engages with the technology of writing is, in an active way, defining the possibilities and uses of writing in a broader context. What I would call, therefore, a culture of writing is in fact a series of responses to a writing system which constitute what would typically be called its spread. In addition to offering, I think, a better picture of how and why societies become literate, in focusing on responses to writing, this allows the development of new writing systems to be considered alongside new uses of old. It also allows for the use of different scripts or languages participating in the same culture of writing to be considered alongside each other, even if those differences have traditionally separated them in this childly perspective. More directly juxtaposed, strategies of opposition and emulation become more apparent. To illustrate the concept of cultures of writing, I will center discussion on the invention of two different writing systems, both developed in the same region and to record the same language, and explore how they emerged and shaped separate cultures of writing. The two scripts in question are Linear B, the Mycenaean Greek script of the Bronze Age, used from circa 1450 to 1200 BC, and the Greek alphabet, oh my God, that's that word, in use from circa 800 BC until, well, today. That 400 year gap is interesting. The Greek alphabet was in fact invented with no knowledge of linear B, which vanished quite without a trace in the broader context of the so called Bronze Age collapse, which spelled the end not only for the Mycenaean palatial system in Greece, but also the Kingdom of the Hittites in Anatolia and other Bronze Age Mediterranean and Middle Eastern powers. In fact, linear B was not read again until the young English architect Michael Ventris deciphered it in 1952. In his publication. His results were first published with the assistance of the Cambridge philologist John Chadwick. <coughs> now, because these two systems, linear B and the Greek alphabet, had no relation to each other, this also has the advantage of demonstrating both how immediate and contextual the development of writing is. Despite recording the same language, they differ in use, medium, and even linguistic structure. It must be noted only in passing that in the early centuries of the Greek alphabet, a third system was used to write Greek the classical Cypriot syllabary, which had no direct relation to either of these other two scripts, though it's something like a nephew or niece of linear B. But for reasons of time and the separate trajectory that Cyprus follows, uh, I will not be able to discuss it at any length today, but if you're interested, you can read the skills in many books. <laughs> now, at this point, it is necessary to say something about what I conceive as two essentially different types of writing systems. The first comprises those which emerge ex nihilo, that is to say, the idea of writing and the script are developed simultaneously. And there are at least there are three examples of this, perhaps more Chinese writing, Mesoamerican writing, and either Near Eastern cuneiform or Egyptian hieroglyphic, or both, it's not clear. The processes by which these are developed uh, have quite reasonably interested people for a long time, and the questions are well served by the scholar of the literature. They are sometimes called pristine writing systems, but this word has some strong connotations, and I think is best laid aside. Primary scripts is much better, and not least because it easily furnishes a name for the other category of scripts, those developed in a context where the idea of writing was already known. They can therefore be secondary scripts, and the process of their invention, secondary script development. Now, these have been historically much worse served by scholars. Uh, those of this are beginning to change, some recent publications considered some alongside each other, but not enough yet. 
Uh, this will, in a way, be a contribution to that discussion, as a culture of writing provides, in a sense, the element which defines scholarly, defines secondary script development and as the prior knowledge of writing. Beyond that basic fact, my conception of cultures of writing allows these to be contextualized against other responses to writing and understood as many, one of many possible strategies. Secondary script is, of course, never inevitable for secondary script development, a point to which we shall return later. Now, so much for introduction. Now we can get into the actual script. So the story of Linear B starts on Crete in the Bronze Age. This was the time of the so-called Minoan civilization, a term popularized by the English archaeologist Arthur Evans, who excavated a series of palatial complexes at <laughs> Sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine pictures of palaces at the beginning of the 20th century. Other similar sites? There we go. Okay, so Nossos reconstructed. Uh, so other similar sites were excavated by the French and Italians at Malia, which was French, and Feistos, which was Italian. Uh, and now we know of many more from Hanya in the west to Zacro in the east, and it's a Greek excavation. Uh, the so-called palatial period, and palace is a term we use at a convenient <coughs> really know exactly what these buildings were for, but that's a question. But the so-called palatial period has its roots at the end of the early Bronze Age, in circa 2100 BC, and came to an end with the so-called Minoan Collapse in circa 1500 BC, for which this eruption of Santorini was once arraigned, but now stands generally acquitted, despite what you may read about Atlantis on the internet. <laughs> After this point, only Knossos of the old palaces remained in use. This period largely overlaps with the history of writing on Crete. The first attestation may be as early as the first signs of the palaces, but we are perhaps putting it off, perhaps better off, putting it a bit later, circa 2000 BC. During the palatial period, two writing systems saw significant use for the island, Minier A, and Cretan hieroglyphic. Right, you're right. Cretan hieroglyphic on a tablet and on seals. Uh, the first, linear A, is, as you might guess, the formal model of linear B. And so there are the linear script of class A and the linear script of class B. Uh, imaginative names. Uh, yeah, and it's the linear aspect is defined in opposition to the much more pictographic nature of Cretan hieroglyphic, especially on seal stones. Yeah, and Cretan hieroglyphs were named as such because they were of a pictographic nature. Reminded Arthur Evans of Egyptian hieroglyphs, but they have no formal connection with each other. It's just, a, again, a conventional name which we use because everybody knows it. So linear A and Cretan hieroglyphs are certainly related somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, but it will suffice to say here that the particulars, along with the likely related question of the origin of writing on Crete, remain very far from clear. The evidence is, for the most part, frustratingly scanty, but there was certainly a complex and fascinating culture of writing just on the site itself. This is to say nothing of other writing systems, famous Feistos discs, and all of those other things. While there is some difference in the use of the two scripts, hieroglyphs were often carved on seals, whereas linear A never was, there was also significant overlap in the administrative sphere, and both were written on clay tablets to form par excellence of Bronze Age and GM administration. The focus here, however, will be on writing in the Aegean and the Mediterranean beyond Crete, since it is that culture of writing from which linear B emerges. This discussion is often tied to discussions of the spread of Minoan culture, Minoanization, or worse, the thalassocracy, imagined by the Greek historian Thucydides over a thousand years later. I'm going to still have to pretend like he knew something about it. But what I want to explore are the specifics of the culture of writing, as outlined above, and the insufficiency of the traditional idea of the simple spread of literacy. The focus will therefore be on how various attestations of writing outside of Crete demonstrate active engagement with the new technology shaped by local concerns. Now, uh, the full range of sites at which known writing has been found can be seen on this map, so obviously all over Crete, but also Thera, Kithra, Ia Stephanos, Miletus, 
Samothrace, which is not on the map inexplicably because I found it long enough ago, so it gets a star in the middle of the box because that's where it is. <laughs> Uh, there is not time enough to explore each and every attestation, so the focus will be on the most interesting, uh, innovative, and surprising cases. Though these inevitably work better for my argument, it should not be forgotten that even straightforward adaptation falls on the continuum of responses within a culture of writing. Now, this can be, of course, only a sampling of what survives and has been found. As we discussed there was obviously more that either has been lost or awaits excavation, uh, especially considering that clay documents in the Aegean were never actually deliberately fired, but preserved only quite accidentally when the building might happen to be kept in top fire. Not so good for them, pretty good for us. Now, while this, these absent documents don't invalidate general trends that might be drawn, I will nevertheless try to focus on features of the preserved writing to avoid allegations of making arguments from absence. Especially interesting are features and forms of the Manila scripts found only outside of Crete, where they are much more richly attested. It bears noting that neither of these scripts has been deciphered per se, this linear A or Cretan hieroglyphic, though similarities with linear B allow us to be fairly certain, in at least some cases, of how the sign should be read phonetically, even though language or languages remain impenetrable. Now, following this map, which nicely shades dark gray and what they think are areas of Minoan territory. Um, this is Niemeyer, who has some strong opinions about how colonial the Minoans were. Uh, but I will divide the places where writing has been found somewhat coarsely between what I will simply refer to as areas of greater, lesser Minoan cultural influence. It's what we can tell from archaeological records. Unfortunately, the writing is undeciphered and we don't get to read anything about their overseas holdings or lack thereof. Naphthera, Thera, Miletus, Kithera have all been um, yeah, chaos there. Uh, have all been mooted as sites of actual Minoan colonies, and certainly the degree of influence in the archaeological finds is great at all four. Now, the presence of linear A at each site is often taken in support of the conclusion that they are colonies, but I don't think the evidence is quite as simple as all that. Of the four, three have produced linear A tablets, often considered the most indicative feature of Minoan administration and so direct control. The picture changes when archaeological context is considered, however. While the tablet from Milos is associated with the largest building in the settlement, and has so has a reasonable claim to association with centralized administration, the same can't be said for those from Thea and Thera. While the former site offers little to work with in terms of the tablets, the tablets from Thera appear to be commercial rather than administrative in nature, tell sort of based on their fine spot and what we can read of them. And while their appearance has led to the assumptions that a linear A archive, administrative archive, awaits, awaits unexcavated elsewhere on the site, this does not strike me as inevitable. The Baron Trader can simply have adopted the technology to his own use without the panoply of Minoan administration. Inscribed finds have often lend themselves to positivistic interpretations, <laughs> tablets, administration, control, but this is in fact only a hypothesis and cannot be taken as read. And more demonstrative of local writing, local adaption of writing Thera is a shirt of pottery inscribed with linear A, recording ideograms and quantities. Now this is the only instance anywhere of a skirt being used on this support as what appears to be an ad hoc recording mechanism. Elsewhere this was always done on the tablet. So this then seems like a strong candidate for evidence of local innovation rather than a top-down imposition of writing and administrative structures supposed by colonizing narratives. On Kea, too, we have an unexpected manifestation of writing, something which can only be described as a bit of playfulness on a cup, uh, made of what the excavation's director lovingly describes as the characteristic rough local fabric with large and small particles of stone, the finest work. Someone, presumably the potter, has inscribed a linear A sign model on a cup. Knees on a beam. There can be no doubt, I think, that this is intentional, and what clinches it for me is that the sign is written with the handle on the right-hand side, whereas it is far more often to find the sign of linear A with the handle on the left, as it is found in linear B. So, he swapped it around to make sure that everything matches. This is certainly not an elite item, 
and indicates a knowledge of and interaction with writing by a non-elite craftsperson. Nothing of this sort has ever been found on Greek. Now, this is perhaps closer to a potter's mark than, a, than writing stricto sensu, but I don't know that this is a meaningful distinction in this case, as it is a response to the written sign either way. Both of these examples demonstrate that, even near the center of the Minoan cultural sphere, the writing of Linear A was not entirely homogenous or controlled. Rather, each region expanded the uses and possibilities of the script. We see similar differences when looking to the peripheries, to use the old-fashioned term, of Minoan influence. This includes the Greek mainland and the northeast Aegean island of Samothrace. Mainland and a fun little star. While one find from the mainland, a sign inscribed on a bronze vessel from a rich grave of Mycenae, has conceivable if indirect parallels on Crete, the other, from Aya Stephanos in Laconia, is sui generis. A small, rectangular tab of local schist, its function continues to baffle. Could be a weight, could be an amulet. Publisher doesn't know, no one does. It is therefore perhaps best contextualized as a regional experiment after exposure to writing. That said, if this was an experiment, it does not seem to have been a significant one, nor one that spread wider throughout the Greek mainland. I doubt if this has anything to do with the later invention of linear B. But we cannot argue that writing is not known. Here we see the possibility of a broadly apathetic response realized. <coughs> the material from Samothrace is in some ways even more interesting. Rather than linear A, we have Cretan hieroglyphs, a system much less given to travel. These are, in fact, the only archaeologically recovered asset stations from outside of Crete, and it is a seal of the British Museum said to be from Kithra, but said to be. This is perhaps the best example of how different regions can shape writing in different ways, though certainly Cretan hieroglyphic seal inscriptions, they are found on nodules, which are only ever very linear A on Crete. Though these are typically suggestive of administration, the inscriptions appear to be religious in nature, in the beginning of the so-called libation formula, for those of you familiar with that. Uh, and oddest of all, one of them has what seems to be a linear A inscription on the side. Now, there are Cretan parallels for both scripts in use in the same place at the same time, but there is none for both on the same support. Though there is some evidence, contact with other elements of the known culture, these are far more limited on Samothrace than anywhere else where Greek writing has been found. It has, nevertheless, been suggested that, much as on Thera, this evidence necessitates the presence of the known administrators <coughs> on the island. Again, one. It certainly shows familiarity with the Minoan administrative practice and the known writing, but both in novel ways. It was not a model adopted in a straightforward manner or imposed directly from above. This far from Crete, the possibilities of writing can change greatly, and we flatten the narrative by assuming that this can only be the result of physically present Cretans. Though using imported, imported scripts, writing in Samothrace was a unique and local development. All of these attestations record adoptions and adaptations of the same script. <coughs> There's no reason to think that any structural changes have occurred in any of these instances, nor that a different language is being recorded, though we're not particularly well equipped to know. Despite variations in the particulars, the scripts themselves are largely are accepted largely as they were found. This represents one range of possibilities within the cultural writing, and demonstrates the heterogeneous nature of uses, even for a single script. But it is, of course, not the only possible response. I've already touched on secondary script development, and of course we must come to linear B. But we turn our eyes first to Cyprus, where we see a similar but different process. Even more so than on Samothrace, writing on Cyprus appeared during a time when strong contact with the known Greek is simply not attested. This occurred in local terms during the late Cypriot I period, or the 16th to 15th centuries BC. Without getting too deep into what is a complex, fascinating issue, it will suffice to say that writing on Cyprus clearly shows knowledge of multiple possible models. In a way, it represents the overlapping boundary of two separate cultures of writing. We call this undeciphered, undeciphered script Cyproman because of its apparent debt into linear A, but this is one of those old names that sticks around conventionally despite being rather reductive. It is attested on a range of media, including jewelry, seals, and various play supports. And the earliest writing on the tablet, and perhaps the earliest overall, displays very close affinities with linear A at a paleographic level, but with variation that is very clearly a different script. And 
just stolen from Curtis Steele's recent book. Uh, but there are also important differences. The first two signs on the tablet are repeated on the side. You can see there, less clearly there. Uh, as though for indexing purposes, and this is a, a feature known of cuneiform tablets in the Near East, but never of uh, Indian administrative tablets uh, in the West. Other early instances of writing show stronger Near Eastern influences, such as the cylinder seal from Antomi. Uh, obviously, the cylinder seal is a long pedigree in the Near East. But this must be balanced against the Aegean style of the signs and the imagery. So again, they look rather like the Near A signs, and we have so-called ornament consecration and all these lovely Aegeanizing sort of features. But even yeah, it was far, now it was far from inevitable that the Cypriots should become literate. It is even less necessary that they should use the Aegean model, and they clearly knew of others. To speak of this as a simple spread of writing erases the fascinating and complex response to literacy that this represents. We may finally come to the promised linear B, another case of secondary script development, but one which demonstrates, rather on the opposite tack from Sir Minoan, how close the existing model of new script can be. Unlike the other scripts mentioned so far, linear B was written almost exclusively on clay, and at perishingly little existence outside of the administrative sphere. In this respect, it differs from the known attestations of linear A on the inland Greece, and these seem to have had little to do with this development. Rather, the development of Linear B should be placed on archaeological and paleographic grounds near the beginning of the 15th century BC, when it replaced Linear A with administrative script and the sauce. This replacement corresponds. This replacement corresponds with a host of other changes in the archaeological record, which make the compelling case that control of the palace has passed from indigenous hands to Mycenaean from the mainland in this period. <coughs> Here, as masters for the first time of a palatial complex, faced with unprecedented administrative challenges, the Mycenaeans finally adopted the technology of writing. It's easy to forget, looking back, that this need not have happened, and it need not especially have taken the form it did. The linear A scribes must have survived to help develop the new script, and an alternative solution, such as the continued use of linear A for administration, could conceivably have been found. But, nevertheless, a new script was developed, showing like on Cyprus, influence only from the Minoan tradition. The essential nature of the script and the goals of its development may be discerned in the restructuring of the system with weights and measures from linear A. The development of a new script is also seen as an opportunity for administrative streamlining. But the model was not greatly altered at a formal level. The script remained a syllabary, and various infelicities for the recorded Greek, for example, voicing and aspiration, are almost never marked, which are important Greek linguistics. And these issues were not ironed out or solved. We must recall that they could have done differently. They were reacting to, but not constrained by linear A models, as can be seen by the addition of new signs to represent vowels, apparently, to represent vowels apparently unattested in the Minoan language. But even if we think the necessity was largely the matter of invention in this case, the simplest solution would remain the adoption of linear A. The new language was clearly important, likely as an expression of identity. And it is in exactly this period that we see the limited science experimentation with linear B writing. While different in scale, I do not think that the cases of secondary script development on Cyprus and the Knossos are different in kind from those seen with linear A outside of Crete and can well be understood in the same light. Though both influenced by the same script, the differences between Cipro and Noah and linear B demonstrate how individual each response is, and technology is in each case adopted to suit local needs in a highly specific manner the script and method of writing adapted as necessary. This is not, I think, so different from an enterprising Theron trader scratching his inventory onto a broken pot shirt, or a Cain Potter experimenting with the visual aspect of writing. All represent responses to the idea and known forms of writing. I hope, then, to have shown how secondary script development can be understood within the context of the culture of writing. Now, we can turn to the Greek alphabet for a case that represents different aspects of the theory. Less evidence exists for the situation prior to its invention, but its spread in a rapid, rapid way can well be understood within the same framework. Yeah, so the Greek alphabet emerges after the in about 800 BC, 400 years after the Bronze Age collapse, and in this period, writing was not known west of Cyprus and the Mediterranean. Uh, it was adopted, as we heard, from the Phoenician script. 
There's only one sure instance of Phoenician writing in Nijian prior to the invention, a bronze bowl from the Teke Cemetery of Knossos, which bears an inscription identifying it as someone bowl, which is a similar type. Now, the, there is nothing in the grave later than the, the mid 9th century BC, and the paleography is apparently around 900. Uh, it is an import, so it does not necessarily attest active literacy of Knossos at this early date, but it does reflect awareness of the prestigious potential of writing. The most important other early attestation is an ostracon bearing Phoenician inscription from Eretria dated to the mid 9th century BC, and this is important because it's a local shirt, so it represents native literacy or local literacy. Uh, very little can be said, therefore, about the emerging culture of writing formed by responses to the Phoenician script during this period. But the situation changes at the turn of the 8th century when alphabetic writing is suddenly found in an apparently very short window from the Italian peninsula to modern Turkey. Google Maps. Uh, this great geographical spread and the many variants between different regional scripts have led to complex and competing theories as to the homeland of the Greek alphabet and its paths of transmission. In fact, it is the most far flung of these places, Gaudi, near Rome, and Gordian, which is just west of Ankara, where the first attestations of writing are in fact found, and so Greece, where we would traditionally expect to find it, is left in the middle. <coughs> and because of this, we have theories that the alphabet was not LG invented in Greece at all. And this would be especially radical if we assess the case of the Gordian to be strongest, as all the language written there was not as the language written there was not Greek, but Phrygian. Indeed, even if we accept the revision of dates recently posited by Richard Janko, which would bring the earliest inscriptions from the Greek mainland into the same range, the 9th century BC, the question of precedence remains open, and we are no less faced with the picture of a rapid dissemination across a wide geographic and indeed linguistic divide. As in the Bronze Age, I contend that the spread of the alphabet is best conceived as a range of engagements with the newly developed writing system. Considering both the agency of the adopters and the previous or contemporary attestations of Phoenician writing of Knossos and Eretria, it can be seen that, once the alphabet was invented, it was then adopted in other regions within the context of a general awareness of literacy. It is also a necessary precondition of secondary script development that the inventor or inventors be bilingual. There is no reason to posit that the alphabet was spread by exclusively Greek speakers, and some early doctors were, as we have seen, already familiar with the Phoenician script, at least in regions where it was attested. While I do not wish to revive the old model that posits multiple origins for the Greek alphabet, what I want to emphasize is that each point of adoption was given was open to multiple influences. Just like linear A, interactions were not homogenous. While the structural invention only occurred once, each new region was adopted and adapted the script, shaped its cultural position in new ways. Thinking about it in this way can also, I think, help to illuminate the question of why there were so many regional variants in the early days of the alphabet. In a context of active adaptation, which letters or forms of letters to use and which not was not an inevitable choice, especially if there was knowledge of Phoenician alternatives and variants. In this way, the spread of the script may have occurred less in a systematic manner envisioned by some paleographers with an archetypal Ur alphabet that spread and can be reconstructed in a straightforward manner, but, still in somatic terms, more along the lines of a contaminated, a tr contaminated tradition with multiple inputs at various points. Strategies of opposition and emulation have not often been given in a serious enough consideration. And of course, uh, later in Italy, we get some fascinating things because we have the same types of inscriptions in different languages. And so we see how these models uh, can cross, these models within the culture of writing can cross linguistic boundaries. <coughs> but there's not enough time for that. Uh, in the course of this talk, I introduced the concept of a culture of writing, a way of thinking about the series of responses to a writing system which constitute what is generally called its spread. I've argued that each region or culture which engages with the technology of writing is, in an active way, defining the possibility and uses of literacy. This then shapes the overall culture of writing. My essential contention is that thinking in these terms allows for a more accurate and total understanding of how people have interacted with writing systems and related to the question of secondary script development, which I see as one end of the continuum. To demonstrate the advantages of this perspective, I used the two case studies of the near B and the Greek alphabet and situated them with, within their different cultures of writing. In this way, I hope to have offered a framework for a better understanding of the social and cultural context in which scripts are adopted, adapted, and invented. Thank you.